What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Arden American release number two. Stick around. So we've got a cool one today. I'm pretty excited about this one. We've got an Arden American with us. Uh, this is a new distillery. This is their second release. It came out earlier this year in 2021. Um, generally speaking, it's been pretty well received. Now, if you watch my recent list video about discontinued gems, you'll know this bottle was included as one of them. Actually, I shouldn't say this is discontinued. It was designed as a limited release. They made just shy of 15,000 bottles of this stuff, which is actually a pretty healthy amount. Now, depending on where you live, distribution, etc., this may or may not have made it to your area. Anyway, interesting name on this one. It's AD slash 01.21 colon 01, which, interesting side note, is actually named after the distillery founder, who happens to be a murderous time traveling robot from the 31st century who opted to open a whiskey distillery as a side hustle. What else? Uh, this is a West Coast Highlands distillery. It's right by the sea. And while formerly this is a mainland distillery, you could make the argument that it's within the island region. The closest distillery to this would be the Tobermory distillery on the Isle of Mull, which is right across the strait to the south. So we can probably expect some coastal elements in here that are kind of reminiscent of an island profile. Um, our distillery is owned by Adelphi, and Adelphi is a pretty famous brand name in the world of IBs or independent bottles. We've got an interesting production process on this one. It's made using both peated and unpeated malt. Uh, it's matured in both bourbon and sherry barrels. I believe it's 65% bourbon barrels, 35% sherry barrels, and our sherry barrels are going to be a mix of Oloroso and PX. Being a very young distillery, the whiskey in the bottle here is going to be quite young. It's probably five, maybe pushing six years old, which honestly does make me a little bit nervous. I am sensitive to youth in whiskey, but still one that I'm curious in trying, especially after how well received their inaugural release was last year. This one being their second release, it has been a little bit slower to disappear from store shelves, although I don't expect stocks to last too much longer. Um, since this one came out, they've actually put out a third release as well. I think that one came out in April of this year. So it seems like they'll be dropping these work in progress type whiskeys from time to time, uh, much like we saw from Kilcarran while they were waiting for their stock to age. So, you know, this is interesting. This is a new distillery. It's a craft distillery. Um, yeah, so why don't we hop into a review of this one, see what it's all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So the nice thing about a brand that has its roots in independent bottlings is that you're likely to get good specs. Our ABV on this one comes in at 46.8%, it's going to be non-shell filtered, and our color here is natural. So we've got a nice natural color to our whiskey here. Um, I love this presentation. I think it looks great. We have a very modern, minimalist look to our label here. Uh, our label doesn't conceal too much of our clear bottle so we can enjoy the natural color of our whiskey. Um, uh, we have the distillery name etched up here. I like the bottle shape. Everything works for me. I'm gonna give this one a presentation score of five out of five. So this whiskey is about as craft as they come, but apparently they didn't think it was necessary to tell us that this is non-chill filtered and naturally colored. Uh, in fact, we don't have much information here at all. Nothing about the casks, the maturation, the production process. No real information about the whiskey in general, no tasting notes, nothing. Now, I do appreciate a nice minimalist label, but I don't appreciate minimum information, especially, I mean, it's a craft distillery. They have nothing to hide. But still, I mean, it still looks pretty great though, doesn't it? Let's try our nose. Hmm, uh, fruits and minerals here. Mango, papaya, apples, peach, banana, vanilla, wet rocks, limestone, we have some lemon zest in here, white pepper, sourdough bread, and a touch of balsamic. Our bourbon cask influence is definitely at the four in here. The sherry is in here, but it's more subtle. Now the palate. Mmm. Mm. Beautiful oily mouthfeel to this. Um, peat, earth, grass, rocks, minerals, peaches, olive oil, uh, tangerines, smoked fish in here, some florals, vanilla, and the seared crust on creme brulee. Now the finish.
Mm. Okay. Um, minerals. Gentle peat. Mango. Olive oil. Ocean spray. The spray, not the juice. Uh, powdered sugar. More florals. Vanilla. Creme brulee. Smoked kippers. This is a very mellow, sweet peat finish. Medium in length. Interesting one here. This one is actually a very pleasant surprise. Uh, I bought it on a whim. I honestly had no idea what to expect. But like I said, I was skeptical just because I am sensitive to youth in whiskey. And a five-year-old whiskey from a distillery I'd never tried was a bit of a gamble, but the keywords in there were a distillery I'd never tried. It's always great to try something new, and a lot of these work-in-progress type whiskeys end up being pretty cool. They help us contextualize some of the releases that we get from a distillery at a later date, and it's also kind of cool bragging rights just to say you got on board early, and I bet I'll be bragging about this one in a few years' time. Now it's not complex, but a lot of the elements that come together here are extremely interesting. We've got gentle peat, we've got minerals, we've got coastal elements, we've got florals, we've got fruitiness. There's a lot of stuff coming together here. Personally, I would describe this whiskey as having an island profile despite not being from an island. Uh, I've also heard it described as a west coast highland profile, which I guess makes sense. I'm sure that must be a thing. Um, either way, the bulk of our flavors here are made up of those coastal minerals, the florals, and the fruits. Of course, this whiskey does have its own distinctive character, but for context, I'll make a few comparisons here for you. We have coastal gentle peat with like minerals in here, so our closest comparison would be a talisker. Those notes are a little bit more toned down in this whiskey though. We also have some florals and some gentle fruitiness, which gives me kind of like a craft highland vibe, so maybe Glen Caddam. And there's even a grubby side to this. I'll stop short of calling it a funk, but we could make some association with like Cameltown flavors in here too. So it definitely evokes some very flattering comparisons, but make no mistake, as I said earlier, this is its own thing. Another standout here is the texture, which is both oily and creamy, giving us a very thick mouthfeel, and that fat oiliness really elevates the whiskey. I think for the same reason that people like, you know, oily, fatty, greasy, unhealthy foods because oil delivers flavor, and our whiskey here already has some beautiful flavors to it, but that oil kind of elevates, intensifies, and spreads out those flavors all across your mouth, so we have flavor receptors going off all over the place. I also think that's why our whiskey here doesn't taste very young. Uh, those oils make everything smooth and rounded, not to mention rich, so yeah, I'm really impressed with this stuff. It works so well at such a young age. So my score here is going to be 90. This is one of my favorite surprises so far of 2021. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect going in, but I'm sure I couldn't have imagined enjoying it as much as I do. So this one's for the Talisker fans. It's for the Floral Highland fans. It's for the Island fans. Um, it takes so many different elements from different regions, brings them together, makes them its own. Uh, wonderful stuff. Not something you want to sleep on. Now this one's their second release, it came out several months ago, and as it's from a new distillery, these kinds of releases don't usually last too long on store shelves, but like I said, since this came out, they put out a third release. I've never tried it, I can't compare, but if you see that, probably worth picking up as well. Uh, this, this is one of the best work-in-progress whiskeys I've ever had. Excellent value here, you gotta commend Arden American for pricing these reasonably. Um, they didn't try and pull these off as collectibles, although I'm sure someday they will be, but no, these were priced for drinking, which is why I'm drinking mine. I like this stuff so much I did pick up a second bottle, but not to worry, that won't be sold either. I fully intend on drinking that one too. Um, now you could make the argument that this is expensive considering it's just a five-year-old whiskey, but I think the rarity, the uniqueness, and just the overall deliciousness uh, makes it absolutely worthwhile. I'm 100% on board with this whiskey. Check it out if you see it. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you guys. Have you tried any of these Arden American releases? What were your thoughts on them? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.